It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Good morning. This is the ABC Adult Bible Class video from the New Life Community Church in Fair Oaks, California. We're happy to be with you today and trust that the Lord will bless in all that we do today. And this morning, we're continuing with the series, in The Names of God. And today we're going to talk about Jehovah Shalom, which is the Lord is peace. And quite similar to that is the Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But since we're going to be talking about peace, I thought it would be fun to get out the old song that Elvis made really popular. He wasn't the first, but uh, the most recent. Uh, my goodness, Elvis Presley is the yeah. most recent. <laughs> as far as we know. Uh, Oh, I'm tired and so weary, but I must, must go along till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away, oh yes. Well, the morning is bright and the land is the light and the night night is as fair as the day oh yes there will be peace in the valley for me someday there will be peace in the valley for me, oh Lord, I pray, there'll be no sadness, no, no sorrow, no trouble I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. So we're going to talk today about Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Amen. And also, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. And the Hebrew word meaning peace, or harmony, or wholeness, or completeness, prosperity, welfare, tranquility, Pulling together, isn't that interesting? Yes. All of these, oh, and full salvation and abundant life, these all come encompassed in that word shalom, yes. which has become so well known that it's, that it has kind of lost the strength of its meaning and all of those things that are incorporated into it, it, it is often used, especially in Israel, idiomatically to mean both hello and goodbye. Hmm. And you greet someone, you say shalom. Or you're leaving, you say shalom. Well, here's all these wonderful meanings of, of harmony and pulling together. Uh, the opposite of divisiveness yeah. and uh, 
this is a, a, a wonderful word, shalom. And now we come to realize that 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 it means uh, that that Jehovah Shalom, God is peace, and and all the wealth of that word is included in the name Jehovah Shalom. Shalom isn't just the absence of strife or bad things like friction between groups of people. It would include that, but it's it's more than that. It's the rich presence of good things like fullness and joy. I think we've talked about the ministry of presence before and how important someone's presence is and certainly how important the presence of the Lord is. And when you realize Jehovah Shalom, when you have the Lord's presence, you have that peace. So it means much more than just the absence of conflict. Right. Much more. <clears throat> Simply put, Shalom is life as it was meant to be. There you go. That's good. Uh, and the Lord desires peace for us. It's an important one of his names. And, and I encourage you today to recognize that the Lord is your peace. I want us to go to Judges chapter 6, verse 12. We talked about uh, about Gideon back in the month of November. We had a, I think, a three-week series just on Gideon. And we're going to come back to Gideon today because he's the one where we find this name, Jehovah Shalom. So beginning to read in Judges 6, verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And I want to mention here again, where it says the angel of the Lord, we consider this is an, uh, an appearance of Jesus prior to the incarnation. And this is called a theophany or a Christoph, <laughs> get my pronunciation here, Christophany an appearance of Christ before his, his yes. birth in yes. Bethlehem. Yes. <clears throat> Verse 13, Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Glenn, I'm afraid there are some people saying that about COVID. Well, you know, brother, I think we shouldn't, as Christians, have to worry about getting sick. And I'm not going to follow that line <clears throat> a long ways, but there are people who are treating COVID like Gideon was talking about the Midianites. Yes. And they're saying, where's God now? Skeptics will say that. Where's God now? Well, he's, he's, he's where he always was. He's right here. Gideon prepared a meal for the angel of the Lord who put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. I can't imagine what an experience this was. You know, whenever angels come, they always say, don't be afraid. It's, it, it, it's almost like you'd say, yeah, but I, I don't know if that happened to me. The 
the sacrifice was consumed with fire and then he disappeared. Yeah. Oh my. You know, the thought was if you saw an angel, you were going to die. That was the common thought back then. So that's why the angel says, no, don't be afraid. You're not going to die. Hang on. Just be patient a minute and hear what I got to tell you. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. Yeah. We're in verse 22. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Yes. Exactly what you were just talking about. Yes. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abizurites, which of course is when this was written, uh, talking about to this day. <clears throat> and here Gideon, although he made accusations to the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord said, said to him, Peace be with you. Yeah. He realized that there was peace. Yes. Now even in the midst of this of the sit the terrible situation. Exactly. Just like us in our yes. situations. I'll quit preaching your sermon. <laughs> no, you're emphasizing it. <laughs> and he said the <clears throat> built this altar and said Jehovah Shalom the Lord is peace and the truth of the matter is nothing had happened yet not yet not yet he's given instructions that night to go and burn the pornographic idols of his father that's right and that's what they were and it was it was a very scary thing because the people of the city liked to come and please themselves with these idols and yeah. and they wanted to kill Gideon. Just like people that like view porn and are into pornography today that are addicted to that today. Same situation back then. <clears throat> and this is the case. The Midianites... The other village people, they're all against him, but he's discovered that the Lord is peace. Praise God. And he could have the peace because he had the presence of God. Yes. And the Lord was communing with him even after the angel of the Lord disappeared. Yes. God can still continue to minister and, and yes. speak to him. Yes. They were being attacked by the Midianites. Gideon was in hiding. He's here thrashing this in the, the wine press where no one would expect him to be. There was no hope in sight. Yes. And yet he said, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Amen. And as I watched the news this morning before coming to the church to do this video, watching all the problems with the ice storm in Texas. And this video most weeks goes to some people in Texas. Hmm. I don't know if they'll be able to see it this week or not hmm. uh, because their, their power is off and, and things are so difficult. But Gideon was in, in this terrible situation and the Lord let him know that Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Praise God. And then Isaiah in 9 6, we always think of this verse at Christmas time, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And not only was it Jehovah Shalom in the Old Testament, now it's it's prophesied that in the New Testament, Jesus would be the Prince of Peace. 
And I want us to go to Mark 35. Jesus has been preaching using many parables. He's been preaching all day. And he's tired. Preaching is tiring. Ask any preacher. That's right. <laughs> Give me the scripture again. Mark 4.35. Four. And it's, it's evening. And Jesus needed to go renew his strength talking to his father. So in verse 35, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciple, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. And this, I think, is in the New Living Translation, in case you're trying to figure out where I'm reading. Verse 37, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? <laughs> I, I, if we had a class here this morning, I'd say, okay, raise your hand. How many of you feel like you're drowning? And... And some of those folks in Texas and some mm. of the other states may feel like they're drowning. Yes. And some of the folks who are dealing with COVID may feel like you're drowning. We don't know what to do. Others who are trying to get the vaccine and can't get signed up, they feel like, if I don't get it, the, the vaccine, I'm going to get the, the, the disease. And... They're desperate. But guess who's in the boat? Amen. Now, what we need to understand is there was a storm. And they were not going to drown because the Prince of Peace was in the boat. Amen. And if you're, you're a follower of Jesus... Jesus is in the boat with you. And that Prince of Peace is there. There still was a storm. They were bailing water for all they were worth. But the Prince of Peace was still with them. Verse 39, when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Peace, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? <laughs> I, <clears throat> I want to quote Jesus for some of you who may be watching today. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Well, Daryl, you know how it is. This is really a bad situation. Yes, it is. And we're not denying that. And you need to use wisdom and that which you have opportunity for. Those disciples needed to be bailing the water. Yeah. And they need to do what they can do and yet we do it with the confidence that the Prince of Peace is still in the boat with us. And the verse 41, the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They ask each other, even in the wind, even the wind and waves obey him. Now they're more afraid of Jesus <laughs> than they were the waves. That's right. And <clears throat> they said, who is this man? Because they knew even though they had been 
had been sailing their fishing boats all their lives. They couldn't control the waves and he was able to control even that. And of course the answer to their question is he is the prince of peace even in the middle of the storm. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is the prince of peace in the middle of your storm. Amen. I've been talking about the ice storm in Texas and about COVID. There's the political issues that are going on. And maybe there's some other storm in your life that I don't know about, but you sure do. And you just feel like it's hopeless. But I bring to you this morning the Prince of Peace. He's in the boat with you. Call on Him so that He can say, Peace, be still. There's a chorus I want to sing at this point. He is our peace. He has broken down every wall. He is our peace. He is our peace. He is our peace. Who has broken down every wall? He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. He is our Jesus has just fed about 5,000 men plus women and children. And it's been an amazing day. And they've sat the people down by 50s and they've distributed the food, handful of fish and biscuits. And it has multiplied. Now they have 12 basketfuls left over. Mm. And everybody has eaten. And now it's time to go home. It's dark. Matthew 14, 22. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. He, you you got to catch this. He, <clears throat> he made them. He insisted <clears throat> that they get in the boat <clears throat> and go to the other side. <clears throat> and I can imagine someone probably said to him, how are you going to get there? <laughs> yes. He said, you just do as I <laughs> tell you, go. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he actually sent his disciples apparently before he sent the multitudes. <clears throat> yeah. He sent the multitudes <clears throat> away. He went up in the mountain by himself <clears throat> to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. And of course he's, he, he's praying. He's communing with the Father. His own spiritual strength is being renewed. Yes. Verse 24, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Oh, that's a good description. It's a good description. There are a lot of things that are contrary <clears throat> in yes. your life, aren't there? Yes. <clears throat> now in the fourth watch of the night, which is more or less four o'clock in the morning, because they've taken off in the evening, and now here it is, somewhere between three and six o'clock, maybe in the early, early hours of the morning, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Now, everybody knows 
even people who are, are not Christians, they know about Jesus walking on water. Yes. And here it is, not only is he walking on water, it's on contrary waves that he's walking on. And, you know, I just don't understand. I really felt like the Lord would have me do this, and now it's all going wrong. You ever felt that way? Why is it I'm here? I, I really thought I was in the Lord's will. Well, if you were in the Lord's will, you were. But it doesn't mean there won't be any contrary waves. Oh, I, I don't like that kind of preaching, Glenn. Steps on our toes a little bit, doesn't it? I, I thought if I was in the Lord's will, everything would be smooth sailing. But it turns out there are contrary waves. Yes. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. There we go. Yep. Things don't go our way. And the Lord calls us. Maybe he sends a video from the ABC class. Maybe so. And you say, oh no, what's this all about? Or maybe it's your pastor, or maybe it's a friend who calls to check on you. He says, well, boy, I don't know about this. You know, what I heard on the news, uh, I'm due for the, the second vaccine. And they say, because of the weather back east, they're, they're running out. And maybe we're not going to get the second dose. And all this kind of stuff, you know, that you hear. And you build it up in your mind and you say, ooh, it's a ghost. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. Right. In this storm and a ghost. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And the Lord is saying to you today, do not be afraid. I am here. I've sent Daryl with this message to tell you about the Prince of Peace and I am with you and I will be the peace even in the midst of the storm. And good old Peter. Now there are 11 who didn't even offer. But Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said to him, come. Peter, when, it, <clears throat> when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Hmm. Yes. People usually say, oh, there's only one person who's walked on water. No, there are two. Peter is the second one. And it's amazing, in the midst of that storm, and the storm is still going on, Peter, by faith, he sets out to come to Jesus. Oh, wait a minute, there's verse 30. Yeah. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. If you've been looking around at the waves, and in this case, boisterous, I think maybe that's translated boisterous so that it'll be talking about all the news you've been listening to and all the rumors yes. and all the people who've got their opinions about this and about that. The winds are boisterous. They're beating on your ears or <laughs> on your emails. And he was afraid. And the one who also walked on the water, began to sink. But he did the right thing. Saying, Lord, save me. And I challenge you this morning, if you feel like the winds are boisterous around you and you're going to sink, cry out today and say, Lord, save me.
And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Here they are, going across the sea in the boat like Jesus had instructed them. The waves came and they were, they were terrible. And then Jesus came. And it took them a little bit to figure that out. But finally, Peter said, Lord, save me. And I encourage you today, call out and say, Lord, save me. Whatever that situation is that, that you're in. If this applies to you, cry out, Lord, save me. And let him reach out and take you by the hand and lift you up. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight Rolls a melody sweeter than song In celestial light strains it unceasingly falls O'er my soul like an infinite calm. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love ah soul are you here without comfort or rest marching down the rough pathway of time make jesus your friend ere the shadows grow dark oh accept his sweet peace so sublime peace peace wonder Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love, peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of Thank you, Lord, that Amen. we can call upon you and that you have Praise given us name. the assurance yes, Lord. that even in the midst of the storm, you are our peace. Praise your holy name. And I pray Thank for you, those God. who are watching this video today. Yes. Who are in the midst of a storm in their life, whether it's one that we have named or something different. Lord, may they call out to you like Peter who was sinking. And say, Lord, save me. Amen. 
And Lord, may they call out with faith, believing that you will reach out and lift them up. Yes, Lord. And Lord, may your peace be theirs today. Yes, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Peace, peace, peace. wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of